and welcome to the LoSciChem input file tutorial. I'm Rex Chamberlain of Tetra Research and in the next 10 minutes or so I'm going to give you an overview of the LoSciChem input file. So let's go ahead and get started. Basically the file is an ASCII file that you, the user, can easily edit and it has the extension .vars. Or we simply call it the vars file for short and it allows you to provide all of the input for your boundary conditions, your initial conditions, the run parameters, and any specific output options that you want to see. So let's go ahead and look at the sample case that we're going to consider and I'm going to pull up uh, in pointwise the structured mesh for uh, a hemisphere cylinder with an aerospike. So here's the hemisphere cylinder part and the aerospike is sticking out in front of it and at the end of the spike there's a small disk um, from which we're going to inject hydrogen which will then be ignited and the idea is to reduce the overall aerodynamic drag through uh, the heating of the flow with the combusting hydrogen. So this is just to get you oriented to the problem that we're going to consider and we'll be coming back to this when we look um, more specifically at the boundary conditions. So let's look at the input file and for this case, we simply call it hemspike.vars. That's the vars file for this case. And we'll open it up with VI and take a look. So we begin at the top of the file with two comments that are indicated by the two forward slashes here. It just identifies the case and the AIAA paper um, that discusses more details about this run. And then before we actually begin the input, we're um, loading two modules that are extensions to the baseline version of CHEM, um, the Tetra extensions and also the high-speed flow module. And um, these are both add-on modules that um, extend some of the basic boundary condition and other modeling capabilities of CHEM. So I'll point those out um, as we get into the input. So the input file begins with this opening left brace and then we, in no particular order, uh, begin with the grid file information. We we'll use the typical volume grid or VOG file, which is the default for CHEM, and the reference length here is set to one meter. Everything in CHEM is in the MKS system, so this is all default, but we could change the scale of the uh, model if we wanted to here by changing the LREF. So then we'll look at the boundary conditions and um, these are labeled um, BC2, BC3, and so forth. And let's go back to our pointwise picture of um, the boundary condition numbering. So um, the outflow is labeled here as, as number two, and that's shown in yellow. The inflow is uh, in green, that's shown here. The cylinder and the spike are both solid wall, and that's number four. The symmetry, 5 and 6, for the axisymmetric uh, symmetric conditions on those boundary faces. Um, and then the hydrogen inlet is um, a mass flow, number 7. And number 9 is the base of the cylinder, and number 10 is the axis. So let's go back to our boundary condition input and see that for the outflow, we're just going to extrapolate for boundary condition number 2. Number three is a supersonic inflow that corresponds to the wind tunnel conditions for this case, the Mach 2.2 free stream. Boundary condition four is both the body and the spike, and that's just an adiabatic uh, solid wall, viscous wall condition. Five and six are the symmetry planes for the axisymmetric flow. Uh, boundary condition seven is the transpiration mass flux condition for the hydrogen inlet, so we're inputting pure hydrogen with a mass flow of 0 0.0027 kilograms per second and the transpiration mass flux keyword here to the viscous wall condition is contained in the tetra extension so that's a, contained in this add-on module that we indicated up here for uh, in the load module command. Boundary condition 9 is just the base and that's again adiabatic viscous wall and the axis BC10 will just use reflecting. So that sets up uh, the boundary conditions and um, 
let's go on to the initial conditions. So we'll set here everything free stream except uh, we'll use the Mach number zero. So pressure and temperature are free stream values, but the Mach number is zero. The gauge pressure um, is set here, and that's just the free stream pressure. So we'll subtract out the pressure from the force integration on the cylinder and just look at the four body drag. And then the, since this is an axisymmetric case, we're setting the grid coordinates to be axisymmetric. And in chem, that's set up simply by translating a 2D mesh, one cell into the third direction. And then um, you can set grid coordinates axisymmetric here to run uh, an axisymmetric flow without actually having to rotate the mesh. The ignition for the hydrogen is set here, and this sets the um, amount of heat that's added at this position in the mesh with a, a radius of one centimeter away from the ignition source, and we're starting at iteration 200, and stopping at iteration 300, and allowing a maximum temperature of 2,000 Kelvin, which is certainly enough to ignite the hydrogen with all of the air that is in there. The chemistry model we're going to use as a prefabricated um, H2 air model um, that's already in the chem database and it has nine species and 67 reactions. The transport model, uh, we're simply specifying transport DB or transport database and that's going to use the species transport for viscosity, thermal conductivity, and diffusivity for all of the species that are in this chemistry model and use them from the chem database. So that's the simplest thing to do is, is just use the transport database that already exists. The um, next is we're going to specify an adaptive stable flux which um, has a parameter HLLE alpha and what this does is switches to a more diffusive flux from the row flux near discontinuities where the pressure ratio in is greater than one. So the HLLE flux is slightly more diffusive. It's stabilizing your shocks. So that's um, contained in the high speed module, um, which we referenced at the top of the file with the load module command. All right, let's move on to the remaining portion of the file. We're going to use the SST, the Mentor Shear Stress Turbulent Transport Model and turn off the compressibility correction, uh, which is not needed for this case, and also specify additional plot output variables, um, k and omega for the uh, turbulent transport model, uh, the, the turbulence viscosity, t mu, and the laminar viscosity, mu. And then we'll move on to some of the output parameters here. Every 25 steps, we're going to print um, some output to the output file. So that'll kind of give us an indication of how the run is moving along. The plot frequency is set to 100, so we'll get a plot every 100 steps, except that we've also specified plot modulo of 100, so that plot will be overwritten, and we'll get a new plot every 100 steps. This is a way to cut down on the amount of disk space that you end up using with um, generating a lot of plot files. And very similar for the restart frequency, we'll restart uh, write a restart file every 200 steps and instead of generating new restart files we'll just overwrite with the restart modulo every 200 steps. Stop iteration is set to 1000 and that's more than enough to run this case. Probes, notice that they're commented out but I'll just make mention of them that the XYZ locations of the probes will provide flow field information at these six locations um, you can specify any number of probes, but um, they will give you specific flow field information at exactly those locations. The time integration is set to Euler. That's a first order time integration technique, and hence we only need one Newton sub iteration uh, for it to run a steady state case. The fluid linear solver that we're going to use is the line symmetric Gauss Seidel, which is a very robust and fast technique and set the number of iterations to three. The typical number might be from three to eight depending on the complexity of the problem. Well, we're just going to run, try to run this very quickly and set three iterations. The limiter is the Venkata Krishnan limiter and we're setting the thresholding parameter KL to one and this is a very robust and 
typical combination. The idea is to turn off the limiter and smooth the regions of the flow and keep it on near discontinuities and the thresholding parameter KL helps you do this. So the last three parameters are, are CFL max, you relax, and DT max. And CFL max is the maximum CFL number. It's 40,000 in this case. You relax is 0.1 and that says not to allow the pressure or temperature to change by more than 10% in a given iteration. And DT max is set to 1 E minus 3 and that's the largest uh, time step that's allowed for a given iteration. And these are typical and fine parameters for this steady state run. So um, then we close the input file with the right brace and that is basically it. I should point out that um, a detailed discussion of all of this input is in the uh, user guide which is included with the Kim uh, installation. So just refer to that for any uh, details that you might have missed. So in the next um, tutorial, we'll run this case and actually look at the output, do the visualization with FieldView. So thank you very much for watching and um, hope you enjoy using Kim.